Hello, once again, this is Pastor Phil Fernandez of Trinity Bible Fellowship, and uh, we're looking at Bible history at this point, and in the last uh, mini lecture that I had, um, we talked about first there was the creation period, the ancient history of the human race, second, the patriarch period, the ancient history, the origin of the Jewish nation, uh, Third, the Exodus period, Moses delivers Israel out of Egyptian bondage. God uses Moses to deliver the Jews. Fourth, the conquest period, Joshua conquers the promised land. Fifth, the judges period, a period of moral anarchy. And now we have in the Old Testament, the United Kingdom period. Now the, the Jews are saying, you know, what our problem is, is uh, the Gentile nations, all the non-Jewish nations, they have a king. And in the judges' period, there was no king over Israel, and each man did what was right in his own eyes. So we want a human king. Well, Samuel the prophet was upset because it's like saying, look, God is your king. Samuel the prophet was like the last of the judges. Yahweh is your king. You're rejecting Yahweh. If you get a human king, he's going he's gonna to rip you off. Your daughters are going to be his servants. Your sons he's going to send into battle. And um, just obey God. So the problem wasn't that they didn't have a king. The problem was that without a king enforcing the law, they just did what was right in their own eyes. And so that's, just, that's a lesson for us to understand that to be free, to, to govern oneself, you need to be spiritually mature. John Adams, our founding father, recognized that, that our Constitution was made solely for a spiritually mature people. We see, see, cease to be spiritually mature, we're going to cease to be free. So the people cried out to, to, for a king. And God told Samuel the prophet, don't worry, they haven't rejected you, they've rejected me. And so give in to them. And so the United Kingdom period, you had one king over Israel, and uh, it was uh, King Saul from the tribe of Benjamin, a man who was, was a disobedient man, lack of faith, up and down, uh, would get depressed, probably even demonically oppressed, I would think, at times. But God wanted a man after his own heart and eventually chose a shepherd boy who killed the the Philistine giant said the battle is the Lord's and then he embedded a rock in the forehead of Goliath and beheaded Goliath with his own sword. So then King David was anointed to be the next king. So after Saul died, David became the king over Israel and then after him, Solomon. And, um, and then Solomon built the temple. David wanted to build it, but God said, no, you're a bloody man. Your son will be a man of peace. Solomon means peace and he'll build the temple. And so you have Israel's glorious years. Now the main thing here is that God gave the Davidic covenant. Now, the, the seed of Abraham, the seed of the woman, the one who's going to crush the head of the serpent but suffer in the process, the seed of Abraham through, through whom all nations will be blessed. Um, it turns out now that he, it, the, the Davidic covenant, the Messiah will sit on the throne of David forever, and, um, and so the, the Messiah will come from David's line. But the United Kingdom period, Israel's glorious years, then the seventh period in Bible history was the divided kingdom period with the ten northern tribes Israel split off from the two southern tribes Judah about 900 BC Jeroboam led this rebellion against Rehoboam the son of uh, Solomon who raised the taxes of the people so the northern tribes split off but then eventually the northern tribes were taken captive by Assyria in 722 BC so that's the divided kingdom period but Judah, the southern tribes, Judah, Benjamin, and of course the Levites had to be there to be at the temple. Jerusalem was in the, the southern tribal region. Um, uh, they remained sovereign until the Babylonians conquered the Assyrians and eventually came down and conquered the land of Israel. And so that's the captivity period. About 606 B.C., the Babylonians invaded Jerusalem and they came back 586 B.C. and took the people captive at both times. 586 B.C., they destroyed the temple, and, uh, and the Jews entered into the 70-year captivity from roughly 606 B.C. to about 538 B.C. And so that's the captivity period, the two southern tribes on the Babylonian rule. I believe at that time, they were probably reunited with the ten other tribes. Um, uh, but then you had the return period. The return period under the, the Meds and the Persians joined together and they conquered the Babylonians. Daniel um, was uh, uh, one of the advisors to the Babylonian kings. 
And uh, but he said that the judgment has come, the writing on the wall, and uh, and that and that night the Meds and the Persians conquered. So the Persian king Cyrus allowed the Jews to return to the Holy Land, to return to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple and the walls of Jerusalem about 538 B.C. And that return period at least goes up to about 400 B.C. Then you have the 400 silent years where no books of the Bible are written. There are other books that are written, good historical books, but they're not books that belong uh, in the Bible from the Protestant perspective, and I would agree with that. And so the 400 silent years, the gap between the Old and New Testament, someday we'll talk about that when Antiochus Epiphanes and the Maccabees and some of the exciting things that occurred during that period. But during those 400 silent years, the Jews were under uh, Persian rule. Then the Greeks under Alexander the Great conquered the Persians about 333 B.C. But after Alexander the Great died, his kingdom was split four ways among his generals who were fighting for power. And the Jews were then under Syrian rule and eventually later under Roman rule about 65 B.C. And that takes us up to the gospel period, the, the birth, life, uh, death, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus, the Jewish Messiah, the life of the Jewish Messiah. The Jews were under Roman rule, and that's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the first four books of the New Testament. Then we go from the gospel period, the life of Christ, to the early church period, uh, where the gospel spreads all over the ancient world, the Roman Empire. And you have the book of Acts, which focuses on the ministry of Peter and Paul, how Jesus baptizes the church. After Jesus rises from the dead, he you know, he dies on the cross for the sins of mankind. He rises uh, from the dead, appears to his disciples, and after 40 days ascends to heaven. Ten days later, he baptizes the church on the Feast of Pentecost. And then the early church period, the church, the book of Acts, begins to spread all over the ancient world. And then you have the epistle period, uh, number 13, the final period, the apostolic letters, letters from the apostles and their colleagues teaching Christians how to live godly lives. So let's take a look real quick, the historical overview of the Bible, the creation period, the ancient history of the human race. It's the creation, fall, flood, and tower. The patriarch period, the Jewish fathers, the start of the Jewish nation, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and his 11 brothers. The exodus period, Moses... God uses Moses to deliver Israel out of Egyptian bondage. Conquest period, Joshua conquers the promised land. The judges period, 13 judges over Israel, a time of moral anarchy. The United Kingdom period, one king over Israel, the first one was Saul, then David, then Solomon, Israel's glorious years. But then came the divided kingdom period, period number seven, with the ten northern tribes split off from the two southern tribes, and eventually the northern tribes are taken captive, um by the Assyrians in 722 B.C. Then the captivity period where the two southern tribes are taken captive by the Babylonians who de de defeat them, destroy Jerusalem, destroy the temple. After 70-year captivity on, is the return period, the Medo-Persian rule, where the Persian king Cyrus allows the Jews to return to the Holy Land, rebuild the temple and the walls of Jerusalem. Then you have the 400-year gap, the silent years between the Old and New Testament, then the gospel period, the life of Jesus, the Jewish Messiah, uh, where Jesus is born of a virgin, then dies on the cross. God the Son become a man, dies on the cross for our sins, rises from the dead to conquer, dead for, to conquer death for us, pierced his disciples, ascends to heaven, and he promises to return. It's the gospel period. Then the early church period, the gospel spreads all over the ancient world. And then the epistle period, apostolic letters, teaching Christians how to live godly lives. And so that covers Bible history, both Old and New Testament. Just a little bit of an overview to help you read your Bible and study your Bible um, in its proper historical context. Thank you, and uh, God bless you.